My great student, students, in today's video, we are going to cover accounting equation from the previous question paper. All right, so this question was question one, and it also include a gap principle, which we just gonna go through. Then uh, the next step, then we will do our accounting equation that have 39 marks. That's a lot of marks, guys. So please make sure that you watch all this video so that you will understand the principle that you need to apply when you prepare accounting equation which is very simple okay let's start with our video okay so as i said guys this is a previous question paper it was exemplar of accounting uh, test one uh, paper paper one okay for grade 10 okay number 1.1 1 .1, uh, is a concept state whether the following statement is true or false write only the answer next to the question 1.1 for example they say it's false in the answer book okay 1.1.1 the historical cost concept means that the fixed assets are recorded at the cost in the financial record of the business is it true or false okay what do you think this is true guys when we record uh, our um, assets we have to make sure that we use the historical cost okay we have to make sure that that cost price under fixed assets we show it each and every year as it is all right so number 1.1 1 .1, without wasting time it's gonna be true okay then 1.2 the matching principle uh, refer to drawings up financial statement so that income in and expense in care in particular year are taken into account Yes, it's true. A matching concept said that we have to make sure that we record income and expense in the correct accounting year. Okay? It's going to be true. Then 1.3. The prudence concept refers to selling of stock at the lower possible price. Is it true or false? It's false. Prudence never say that. Prudence principle never say that we have to make sure that we record stock at the lower possible price okay even though we have to make sure that our inventory are recorded at the lower cost but they didn't say that a possible lower cost price so i'm gonna hear from you guys what does the principle of prudent say explain to me in the comment section then i will comment whether your explanation is correct or not okay then now let's go to 1.4 the business entity rule means that the financial affair of the owner and the business will be kept separate yes it's true we have to make sure that uh, when we record the transaction of the business we do not have to include let's say for example our owner have a house we don't have to include the cost price of the owner of the house. Why? Because the principle of business entity said we have to make sure that business is business, private is private. Okay? Which means that it's true. We do not have to include the personal transaction into a business. Now let's go to main question that we are going to do uh, for this video. Okay, now let's continue with 1.2. Okay, transaction number 1.2.1, .1, it says that uh, it uh, bought a stationery of 1,000 paid by check. We have to make sure that we lay down two components. Okay, components number one uh, is going to be a stationery and component number two is going to be a bank. Okay, how are we going to record this? Very simple okay we, we said number one is going to be bank because it has been paid by check and the other one is going to be stationary okay two components that we are going to use number one is bank which is assets because we paid bank is going to decrease assets decrease on the credit side bank okay which means that the other one we have to debit a stationary a stationary is an expense it must be on the debit side expense come to debit side income come to credit side okay and the amount 
under assets is going to, which is going to be affected is going to be minus 1000 because we paid money goes out of our account and expense is minus as well okay this side is going to be unchanged okay then a source document that has been used is check counter okay let me write it clear check counter fall check counter fall all right then 1.2 they said uh received a check of 4950 from a data in settlement of her account of 5000 okay so this person was owing 5000 but business allowed the person to pay 4000 950 simply means that the other 50 rand is discount okay so which two components are we going to record in this case number one is going to be a debtors control and bank bank we are going to debit because we receive money from a debtor okay and the debtors control we are going to credit it debtors control to indicate that this person is the reduced what liability is going to be plus and minus amount of 4950 4950 very simple then the next one uh, on the same a uh, transaction guys we have to record a discount okay we are going to say it discount allowed here discount allowed and what data's control okay which means that data's control is going to be reduced by 50 rand of discount okay and also under equity debtors allow discount allowed is an expense it's going to be a minus 50 rand expense recorded on the debit side discount allowed debtors control is an asset on the credit side very simple this one is going to be unchanged okay and the following one 1.3 they said goods sold for cash uh, the cost price was 2000 Okay, in this transaction, guys, we are going to have, uh, we have to record two balances. The first one is for sales. The second one is for cost of sales. Okay, how are we going to record it? Very simple. Bank will receive cash from customer of, because of sales. Bank, and we credit what? Sales is income is credited here. Simple. Okay, and the amount of sales, we don't know. But we have a markup. Okay, let's show the calculation here. We have 2,000, guys, of cost of sales, and we have to apply a markup. Remember, markup, they said, is 60%. When we calculate a sales, we're going to say once it gets over 100. On top, is always 100. You just add what? A markup of 60%, and you're going to get the amount now, which is 3,200. 3,200 is positive because... We receive cash and our sales is income. Income is positive. 10,200. Okay, then from there, now we can record our cost of sales. Cost of sales, we don't calculate because we are given 2,000. Okay, and it's go with inventory. Inventory is a minus because we no longer have this inventory. Inventory is an asset, it has been subtracted into our assets. We no longer have it, we sold it to customer. Cost of sales is an expense, it's gonna be a negative. Then this side is gonna be unchanged. Simple guys and straightforward. Okay, then the following one. The owner withdrew a check of 650 and took trading stock at a cost price of 950 for personal use. Okay, there is a two different transaction here but all of them guys they are drawings okay the first drawings drawings guys is a equity when you withdraw 
you are reducing equity is a minus okay we have two drawings drawings and another drawings the first drawings is cash which is going to affect the bank and the other one the owner will draw what stop which is going to affect inventory okay for the one that affect cash he will draw a cash a check of 650 it's gonna be minus 650 and minus 650 okay and the inventory that he take is 950 minus 950 minus 950 it's minus because drawings is an expense inventory is an asset on the credit side credit is a minus bank this side is a minus drawings is equity is a minus simple guys then the last one retainable returned defective stock to the value of 460 to supplier we return to supply which means that we're no longer going to pay that credit that we owe for this inventory okay which means that our liability is going down a creditors control a creditors control okay we return what we return inventory which means that liability is going to be minus amount is how much is 460 and we no longer have that inventory that we return it's going to be forced against. All right. Then the last part, uh, guys, you have to make sure that you know this source document. For transaction number two, we have a duplicate receipt. It's duplicate because the, the, the person that was owing us, it was, oh, he was owing us a 5,000, but he paid 4,950. And the other one is discount that's why we call it duplicate it means double okay then the other one is cash register roll okay we receive cash here for sales okay then the, the next one is the similar with the first one is check counter counter foil okay and the last one the other one is a general voucher from the same transaction guys check counter foil is for this one that affect bank like this one then the, this one is gonna be general voucher general voucher is withdrawal of inventory okay then this one is duplicate debit node you know that when we return something we have to use a debit node so i hope you learn something grade 10 go to grade 10 uh, playlist and check the other video that is going to suit you because i recorded everything from chapter uh, from chapter one up to the last one so please make sure that you also like this video share and subscribe see you next time guys i hope you enjoy goodbye